Hey everyone. So this chapter was huge. Um, I've actually read it a couple times. Um, and what I would like tonight is for you guys to give tons of input. You know, we can, just like we read the book and we gleaned from what Rachel said, um, I don't want to spend the whole evening giving you my perception of, of really what the chapter was about. Um, foundationally, it's really about, I think it's about being honest with ourself. It's about being intentional. It's about, um, you know, really learning to understand how what we say has power. We talk about that a lot of times. Um, and yet we think that we can kind of separate how we talk about ourselves with how other people perceive us. And I think that that is often not the case. So um, what I wanted to do is, first of all, I wanted to just check with you guys. Um, I've tried to kind of uh, put some information throughout the week and just said, you know, put your thinking caps on, take really good notes, because we want to glean from each other. You know, we want to learn from one another. This is kind of a unique opportunity where there are a bunch of us here that we can learn from. So. I just want to start out by asking you guys, what are some of the things from this chapter that stood out most to you? And I would want to start that out by asking a question. Um, do you ever tell yourself that you're going to do something and then not carry through on it? Or am I, I, or am I, the, am I the only one? <laughs> no, you're not. You're not the only one. You're not the only one at all. And and that was a, a big deal for me in this chapter is it says, you know, we do that to ourselves all the time. But if we had a friend that did that to us, we wouldn't want to hang out with that friend anymore. Yeah, I love this quote from her book. It says, um, we talk about the things we'd like to do, be, try, and accomplish. But once we get to the moment of actually doing it, we fold faster than a card table at Bunko Night. <laughs> You know, and that just resonated with me because, you know, I think part of it is that we see other people around us and we're inspired, motivated. We think, oh, that looks like a good thing or, oh, that looks like a good thing. And we tend to kind of be all over the place rather than really focused on what we want to accomplish. So how, how do you guys feel about that? Is that something that resonates with you as well? And if so, in what type of things? Hi, sorry guys, I, I'm not gonna have my camera on the whole time. I'm making supper for my babies. But this chapter was so huge for me because when she spoke about, like if I would make a commitment with a friend and I'd constantly be canceling or falling through, but I do that to myself, I never keep promises to myself. Like now this um, last couple weeks, I've been thinking about this because I've been reading this for a while now. And every time I want to fall through on myself, I'm like, Sheila, you made yourself a promise. You made yourself a promise to finish this. You can't not finish. So I really, really enjoyed this chapter. And that's really huge because I think we put a lot more value on other people than we do ourselves. You know, we, we tend to hold our word more with other people than we do with ourselves. But I think the reality is, is the more we let ourselves down, the more likely we are to let other people down. Do you guys ever find that? Um, this is Venetia. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good, because I'm driving. Um, so I find that, like what you said, I try and focus so much on like building friendships and relationships and things like that, but I always promise myself stuff and never follow through. So one of the things that I've been working on, and I know she used Diet Coke, as one of the things that was her like hurdle to stop. So one of the things that I've been working on is um, drinking my water every day because I tell myself I'm gonna drink my water every day, but I don't get to it every day. And so one of the things I started and I started like last Tuesday or Wednesday is I have this huge jug that I take to work. And if I drink a glass before it, finish the jug and then drink a glass after it, I put all my water in. And it is so, it makes me feel so good that I've done that for myself. A, I feel better. And B, like I've kept that promise to myself because I harp about water all the time to everyone else. And I'm not even getting my own water in half the time. So like, 
and it's something super small, like hers, was I cook, mine is water, and I just think that when we keep doing that, we're going to really have more enjoyable life to live because we're, we're, we're keeping our promises to ourselves first, like she said, and then focusing on others. Right, and and think how much that's going to affect what we actually accomplish. Um, one of the things I really love that she was talking about, um, um, let me see where she says, your subconscious knows that you yourself cannot be trusted after breaking so many plans and giving up on so many so many goals. So, you know, it's like what we have patterned ourselves to do is what we will continue doing unless we break that pattern. And I loved how she really challenged us to think about that. What is it that has created the patterns in our life? Um, and, and she really just made it very blatant. She said, if you constantly make and break promises to yourself, you're not making promises at all. You're talking. You know, you're just like, wah, 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 wah. it says you're waxing poetic like Pam and her diet or your flaky friend who bails on you to watch Game of Thrones. Um, and it's like, how many times have we bailed on ourselves? How many times have we given up before we've actually even started? Um, how many times have we uh, made progress only to face a setup, setback and then just give up completely? So she talks a lot about how our lives have been patterned and that for us to really understand that concept of that pattern and being able to break it is what is really going uh, to, being, to bring change. Um, let me look here. You know, what's concerning about that too, Amy, is after a while, we don't even feel bad for breaking the promises to ourselves because we just expect to do it. Yeah. We don't, we know we're not going to follow through with it. So it is, it's just talking and we don't feel bad about it later because I think, you know, deep down we knew we weren't going to do it anyway. That's true. You know, when I was in junior high, which was a real long time ago, a friend of mine, you know, we were always going to diet. Diet, diet, diet. That was kind of our, our plan for life. And there was this crazy song. I'm not going to sing it, but I'll tell you the lyrics. It says, I'm going on a diet tomorrow. I'll starve till I waste away. I'm going on a diet tomorrow, but I have to eat today. And, and it, that was to me like that song jumped into my head because it's like that's the epitome of us telling ourselves we're going to do things and not carrying through on it. And so it's that concept of manana, you know, it's always going to be tomorrow. We're always putting things up, off, you know, we're always procrastinating rather than really thinking carefully through what do I want to commit to? And I think that's something that she was saying, you know, there's all sorts of things that tug and pull, of, pull at us, even really good things, even when it comes to um, things that challenge us or goals we want to accomplish you know, where we want to be successful, skills we want to acquire. We have tons of really great ideas on what can enrich our lives and what can enable us to enrich others. That doesn't mean we have to do them all right now. You know, and I think for us to be able to look really carefully at what do we have before us? What are the type of things in our life, in our business that can enrich our lives, that can help us to enrich the lives of others, and to think really, really carefully before we say yes, before we commit to it. I think that in itself will help us kind of pare down all of the stuff that clamors at us so that we have a manageable amount of things that we have a really good possibility of actually accomplishing that. Did you guys think about that as you were going through this uh, chapter? No. <laughs> I, sorry, I couldn't. No. I actually um, completely agree with you. Um, two of you have already brought up the two main things that I got out of this chapter. The first one, I think it was Sheila talking about um, how can you keep a promise to somebody else if you can't keep it to your own self? Yeah. And honestly, I was like, why is everybody else worth these promises and I'm not worth it to myself? Yeah. yeah. I thought of it as that way. And then the other thing was manageable goals. And um, I related to the Diet Coke, not specifically Diet Coke, but I remember making a New Year's resolution in 2017. Um, and I honestly made it thinking that was a huge goal, saying I'm not going to drink soda. And here it is, halfway through 2018, and I still have not drank that soda. 
So I actually related to that and thought, well, man, if I can do that with that one goal, why can't I do it with drinking the water or working out or losing yeah. weight? So it was kind of like a, I should have known that because I've done that. And here she is telling me again. <laughs> yeah, that, that is really good. Um, you know, I think she used that same kind of concept concept with when you really want something you know we, we hear that phrase really often um, we, when you really want something you'll find a way when you don't really want something you'll find an excuse and I think sometimes we think we want something but we haven't really thought it through carefully enough to determine whether we really want something um, so I think again it's a matter of kind of paring back and fine-tuning um, what it is that we really want to determine if it's something that we're willing to give the effort for to actually accomplish. Um, and I, I love it. It says, how does your subconscious know the difference between what you want and what you only pretend to want? Um, it looks at a history of how you've tackled similar things in the past. Um, have you kept your word when you set out to do something? Did you see it through? Um, and, and that the idea of when we're at a loss or something, we, we, tend to um, grab for the lowest bar. And so she was talking about how to retrain herself. And let's say you, she wants to run a marathon. She's not going to like, boom, hit and run the marathon. No, she's going to think, what do I do? How do I need to train? You know, each time you go a little bit further than you did before. And so what you do is you start repatterning yourself and retraining yourself so that the next time you know, she was talking about you, you run a mile. And then the next time when you're tired at the mile, you push yourself on. And then the next time when you go to run five miles, you look back and said, you know, when I was tired at one mile, I pushed on and I was able to accomplish that. So we actually take the steps that we need to take to repattern ourselves. Um, that was one of those really aha moments for me where I went, huh, repatterning. <laughs> you know, that's, that, that's so powerful. Um, if we really think it through really carefully. Anything else you guys can think of in relation to that? Well, when we were um, in Orlando in June, Jennifer Leith had talked about that. She said that every morning her dog would run outside when the mail would come and the dog would run in the same pattern over and over and over and it created this massive ditch in her yard. And she said that our brains work the same way, that we're going to keep making that ditch in our head over and over and over until we figure out a different way to go. And I thought that that was really interesting because I never realized until I heard that, I'm like, wow, I really do the same things and the same patterns and I need to kind of break that and stop creating this ditch in my mind. That's a great one, Hannah. Thank you. Yeah, that one is, that one is really true. You know, and patterning ourselves, you know, I think a lot of times, you know, society is all about what feels good, what you like, what you want to do, what, what kind of feeds you. And sometimes we just need to work hard. You know, we need to, to run a different course. You know, we need to recreate a different pattern. Um, I was never into exercise. I knew I needed to. I, I would kind of dabble in it, but I never... I never really accepted the need for it. And finally, probably, I don't know, maybe it's been a year now, I decided no matter what, I'm getting up in the morning and I'm going to hit the treadmill before I go to work. That meant I had to wake up between 4 and 4.30 in the morning <laughs> to get that done. That wasn't a real exciting idea. But I just started making myself do it. I started setting my alarm. I would do it. I'd wake up the next morning, I was exhausted, I didn't want to do it, I dragged myself out of bed, got dressed, went on the treadmill. Now, I automatically wake up at four o'clock in the morning, never set alarms, get up, do it, even if I don't want to. It's my body has patterned itself so that it's important enough to me that I know this is what I need to do. And I think sometimes we have to be willing to kind of put in that effort and even sometimes that bit of sacrifice in order to create the new patterns that are going to get us to where we want to go in life, um, whether that be in our personal life or whether that be um, in our business life. So have you guys, um, can you think of anything that you actually practically started incorporating this week since you started this chapter? 
Like what type of things have you either changed or are working on thinking about changing? Because <laughs> sometimes it's that process ahead of time where we have to kind of process it, think about it, you know, determine what we want to do. Um, I know with this book especially, I don't want to get through a chapter like this and go, okay, next. You know, I want to really dig deep and incorporate it. So I'm curious as to what you guys are thinking about that. I thought it was great where she tells you to really think about the commitments that you're saying yes to and see how important they are to you. Um, whether you're just saying yes and you hate it to please somebody else or if it's something that's going to be truly endearing to yourself and to the people that you're trying to um, be with or accomplish a goal with. So just by slowing down and thinking about saying yes makes a lot of sense instead of just raising your hand and, you know, just just knowing that you're going to be committed because you want to be committed. So be careful too. What yeah, you're that's, a, that's a really good point because I think, especially as women, um, maybe men are, are like this in some ways too, but especially with women, you know, we want to help people, especially in this business. We want to help people. We want to serve them. We want to care for them. Um, but the fact that um, I remember when I was in missions um, and, and you would just get burnt out because you were always doing, doing, doing. Um, one of the leaders there said, the need is not the call. And that is something that has stuck with me for the past 50 years. <laughs> you know, the need is not the call. It goes against my grain because I want to help. I want to do. I want to serve. I want to care for. But the fact that there is a need elsewhere doesn't necessarily mean it is my responsibility. And I think that's just another little part of us learning to assess the things that could be on our plate, whether they've been put there by someone else or by ourselves, and to really determine, does it need to be on my plate? Should I be eating that? You know, is that something I should be involved in? Is that something that should be taking my time right now? You know, so I think, um, you know, ongoing in relation to this chapter, it has given me such um, kind of forethought is as things come across my path, to ask ourselves questions, should I be doing that? Is it really the right thing for me to say yes to? Or is it really the right thing for me to say no to? Um, and those are sometimes really tough decisions because people have expectations of us, but the fact that they have expectations doesn't necessarily mean that we need to be the one to meet them. What else can you I think, think of? I think that she talked about um, starting with a really small goal yeah. instead of something really big because and that kind of goes with slowing down with what you say yes to, because I tend to say yes to everything. And then I set these massive goals for myself that are not realistic at all. And yeah. then I take on too much and I get really overwhelmed. And that's setting yourself up to not complete anything that you wrote down as a goal for yourself. So I think it is important to not only slow down to what you say yes to, but don't make your goals unrealistic and too big. Start with something small. Giving up Diet Coke was a big deal. She was rewarding herself with that Diet Coke every day, saying, well, maybe I'll wait until lunch or maybe I'll wait until dinner because we're having Mexican food. She was using that as a reward. So starting with something small like that, that's a big deal. Agree. My biggest problem, and I told this chapter was one of those ouch chapters. Yeah. I sit there at work and I jot down things I know I need to do at home, whether it's business, personal, around the house, whatever, and I break it down by what day I'm going to do it, and then I get home from work and I'm like, yeah, no, not in the mood, and none of the list gets done, and it's like that whole breaking promises to yourself thing, why, why do I make excuses not to go to the gym every single day? Why can't I make excuses to go to the, like, you know, there's got to be a reason why I want to go to the gym versus make an excuse every single day of why I can't go to the gym. So I just need to like, like you said, reprogram your brain into it's important to me. I need to do it. No excuses. Sorry. He's about to beat the cat behind me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a really, that's a really good point, Kathy. But you know, I think sometimes for people like um, I'm a list maker 
And I think um, for people that are list makers, sometimes it's actually healthy to write down all those things that are jumbling around in your brain that you think you need to do, that you want to do, that you have to do. Um, and then when you get that list, you can kind of work through them and prioritize them exactly. and say, yeah, this one, this one I definitely want to do. And, and it does kind of go through that balance of what do I want to do? What do I not want to do? What do I need to do? What do I not need to do? You know, what comes first in that list? Um, I think that process in itself will help us to get the stuff out of our head, first of all. And it will also help us to make the decisions on the things that we really want to make the decisions on. You know, to say yes to the things we really have thought about carefully and want to want to say yes to and then to let the other ones go aside sometimes it's just for later um, sometimes it's just for you know another time um, but that way I think we focus much on um, the things that really are important that we want to accomplish Um, and for those list makers too because I'm one of those as well she says at the end in the things that help me to take a good hard look at what you've canceled on the last 30 days, you might be shocked to discover how you're training yourself to behave. So there's a, a list that we could create right there is how many times do we cancel on ourselves in a 30 day period? Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. I'm kind of worried about that actually, but I think we should all do it. That's, that's a really good idea. Because I know that I want to get, I want to recreate that patterning. I want to understand what is it that makes me put myself last in compared to all sorts of other things. And how can I change that? How can I create new patterns? You know, how can we be true to ourselves? And I think the empowerment of really um, holding to what we say for ourselves is going to impact the lives of so many others it's going to impact the lives of our team members it's you know because we're going to be present and ready to pour into them you know or to other significant people in our life um, because we've already established that habit in ourselves i think then we also become a much more authentic example to other people because if they see that we're always giving 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 and we're neglecting ourselves that's not the type of example that we want to be to people. We want to be able to reproduce who we are and how we address things in our life and in our business, um, you know, to really be the example to them. What else can you guys think of? Um, I was just thinking, she says that we always revert back to our, level, our level, highest level of mental training. So, for example, as we talked about last week, I'm a runner. If all I've ever ran is four miles and that's all I'm going to ever do, I'm going to have to step outside of my comfort zone to get to the five, six, seven miles. But then also she says, um, she also says that once you hit your goal, you'll, you've set a new standard for yourself, a new level of mentality. And that stuck out for me. And so whenever I'm, making a decision and I start to revert back to, you know, well, I don't have to exercise today. I go back to, well, that was my standard. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to create the new standard. Yeah, that's great. That's and great. as we refine that, I think as we refine that standard to become a higher standard, that will become our new norm and that will become our new, so to speak, lower but it's higher than it was before. And I think that's how we continue to gain ground in change in this area of our life. Because we push ourselves a little bit, we establish a new level. Then you push yourself a little bit, you establish a new level. And that way, when you look back, you're looking back at a higher level than, than we used to. And I think that that's kind of creating the foundation for change. So we talk a lot about having accountability partners. And I think if we're having a really hard time being honest with ourselves, or if there's something on that list that we just cannot get done, put it out there to someone else and have them help, help us, you know, so we can maybe get some help in changing those patterns. And um, if you have someone to, I think that's the thing. The reason we're not honest with ourselves or 
um, making commitments is because the only person we have to report to is ourselves. Mm. Brilliant. But then, but then we're super hard on ourselves. I wonder why. Well, you're right. I think we tend to go either to, we're either super hard on ourselves or we just slough it off. You know, we kind of ignore ourselves or we're really hard on ourselves. Um, yeah, but that, that accountability um, partner is a really brilliant idea because then you've got someone who's a bit objective and they can help hold you to the standard that you really do want, but you just don't quite have it in yourself to hold yourself up to it yet. So I guess it comes down to deciding, like she said, what do you really want? You know, when you know that you're making a commitment, you're going to take longer to think about it and, you know, before you say yes. So if you know what you really want, grab somebody to help you accomplish that. That's really good. Other gems you guys are thinking of? Yep, we have a couple more minutes for some last minute thoughts. One thing I think is hard too is a lot of us were raised that you put others first, that you know, you don't want to become self-centered. You don't want to be all about me, me, me. So to find that mind shift of it's okay to think about myself as long as it doesn't become out of control where all I'm thinking about is myself. Right. Finding that happy medium of, yes, I have to pour into myself before I can pour into others, but I don't want it to become all about me at the same time. You know, finding that, because, I mean, that's the way I was raised. It wasn't about me. It was about helping others. So I find it, you know, I either become completely lazy and it's all about me or it's all about someone else. I don't, you know, it's finding that happy medium. That balance between serving and, and doing for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I think we need to get rid of the concept that caring for ourselves is selfish. You know, th that to me is, that's like a heart issue. That's not a practical issue. That's really a heart issue. But I think that caring for ourselves is something that we need to do in order to really be the best person, you know, that we've been created to be. So part of it is having to restructure our thinking as well and not looking at it as being selfish, but as being healthy. You know, but you're right, it is a matter of balance for sure. More? <laughs> More nuggets, guys? I'll say this, and this is more general, but Hannah mentioned um, ha having to say no, because sometimes you have too much going on, you have to slow down. So not only is this book teaching me this, but um, this as a group is, you know, we do one chapter a week, so I am only reading that one chapter. And normally I would rush through a book. Yeah. I'm forcing myself to read one chapter so that I can think about it, dwell on it, and then listen to what everybody else has to say about it. And so that, I thought that was kind of neat that Hannah said that, and there was a, a tidbit in the chapter, and it just kind of all blended. That's really good. I was thinking of a cow. You know, cows have four stomachs. <laughs> it's like, that's what we need to be doing. We need to chew, regurgitate, chew, regurgitate. And every time you digest, I know it sounds really gross. <laughs> I was kind of laughing as it came. But, you know, but the reality is, is that every time you chew and regurgitate it, you digest it better. You know, you break it down. You incorporate it into your body to create more strength, to nourish, to energize yourself. So I think, Stephanie, I think that is a really, really good point is just to read it and then reread it and then reread it and then reread it so that it really does incorporate itself into our life. Oh, sorry, dog. Um, hey, you know, it's um, 728. There's another event coming at 730. And I promised Whitney that I would end this on time. So um, I just thank each one of you guys for coming. This has been a really good, this has been a really good chapter and I think we'll continue processing it ourselves. But Lori, you are next week, right? Chapter three, right? Lori, 
<laughs> She's nodding. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Amy. I didn't see an emphatic nod. <laughs> I just saw kind Thank of a you yes. so much, Amy. Every time we do these book studies, I look forward to when you lead because you have so much great information. So well, thank you so much for this great discussion. Okay, well, you guys, onward and upward. We'll be back again next week for chapter three. Lori, can't wait to hear what you're going to be sharing.